Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. Is Western civilization going to destroy itself in the long run? What is the relationship between Israel and Islam? We interview today a national security expert, Ken Abramowitz, with SaveTheWest.com. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. But today we have a newsmaking interview with a celebrity who is an expert on Western civilization and predicts an early demise of Western civilization unless we here in America take certain steps and do certain things to save the West. Of course, I'm talking about my new friend, Ken Abramowitz, who is joining us live via Skype from Washington, D.C. Ken Abramowitz, welcome, sir, to the program. Thank you very much for having me. So, Mr. Abramowitz, you are uh, an investment banker, you are a venture capitalist, and now you are dabbling in politics. May I ask, what are you doing in Washington, D.C. today? <laughs> today, uh, uh, first to summarize, I spend four days a week working uh, in healthcare venture capital and two days a week of public service uh, to save Western civilization. So today, um, it's a public service day. I'm in Washington at the Act for America uh, annual convention hosted by Bridget Gabriel, and it's, uh, uh, I'm learning. I have a rule, when I'm sitting down, I'm learning. When I'm standing up, I'm teaching. So I'm uh, learning today from uh, some of the excellent speakers that they have today. Like well, Eric, Eric Bagelbeck just, just spoke for lunch and was just excellent. We are big fans of Brigitte Gabriel and Act for America and everything that they're doing at that conference. Uh, you also have a website. It's called SaveTheWest.com. And your premise, your thesis, is that Western civilization is going to implode upon itself. Are we being attacked from within or from without? We're being attacked from all directions. And uh, we don't exactly know who the enemy is, and we don't know how to respond to the enemies. But uh, I say that we're under attack from within, basically by ourselves, and we're attacked uh, from outside enemies uh, trying to invade us uh, either physically or invade our minds, and and we have to be have strategies against uh, enemies wherever they are. So this this decay in the West is, did it begin in Europe? Did it begin in America? And is it primarily political, or is it a moral decay? Well, it's a decay al along uh, many fronts, but I, I focus on three fronts: uh, economic, cultural, and physical. Uh, uh, any uh, important society must do those three things, must grow their economy, must protect and, and uh, educate the next generation upon uh, the culture, and number three, must protect the people physically. These are three basic building blocks of any society. And I actually uh, pretend I'm a professor when I hear someone speak, or just when I'm observing, I give grades. So if I were uh, giving grades, uh, uh, we in Europe uh, uh, got A's, AAA, uh, until about uh, World War II. And then uh, that was so traumatic, it, it led to uh, declines. And, uh, but if you just rate uh, America and Europe today, uh, in Israel today, while we're at it, on those three categories, uh, uh, America would get a uh, uh, B, a B, and a C. Uh, Europe would get a D, a D, and an F. Uh, Israel would get a um, A, an A, and a, and a B. So um, that's how I rate the different societies. And my number one argument is that we all should get A, an A, and an A. In other words, there's no uh, excuse for not growing economy, not protecting your culture, and not protecting the people physically. And I try to encourage uh, um, politicians to strive for uh, to be A students, so to speak. Well, that sounds to me like uh, perhaps the three 
I suppose, legs of the tripod in the conservative movement that, you know, un under Ronald Reagan, for example, we had uh, a coming together of national defense conservatives, of economic or fiscal conservatives, and of social or moral conservatives. Uh, and your three-point grading scale seems to fit along those lines. You have economic, you have cultural, and you have uh, defense. Now, you say that America's decline began after World War II. Uh, can you explain not just in the defense structure, but why, why have we declined economically? Well, the three issues are interrelated. I find that when a society's um, inept on one of the three issues, they'll soon have problems in the other two issues. So um, uh, America, uh, uh, in our decline economically versus culturally versus physically, took place at different times. Uh, but I, I would say the uh, economically, uh, our decline uh, was approximately eight years ago uh, when the um, Democrats, who are not really Democrats anymore, they're really the Socialist Workers Party, uh, took over. And the economy has grown about 1% a year for the last eight years, and it usually grows 3 or 4%. So it's not tragic, but there's a lot of unemployed and underemployed people as a result of poor economic policy. So let's say eight years ago would be the start of the economic decline. In terms of the uh, cultural decline, uh, I, I would I hate to say this, it's, it's since the Beatles stopped singing uh, in, in the, in the mid-80s. Uh, the uh, um, music has, um, which is a symbol of culture, has, has become noise. Uh, but I'm, I monitor two issues uh, uh, in terms of culture, the secular culture and the religious culture. The secular culture is the Constitution Bill of Rights. And I'd say that's come under huge attack in the past eight years. Uh, we essentially have a government that does not believe in the Constitution Bill of Rights. In terms of religious culture, uh, uh, by that I mean Judeo-Christian uh, history, religion, tradition, uh, uh, philosophy, that's been under decline for... Uh, probably 20 years, and, uh, and then in terms of physical protection, uh, after Vietnam, the country was very confused and, and basically um, lost its will to win any war. And so I'd say it's since Vietnam that the physical uh, abilities have gone down, and in particular in the last eight years, aided by sequestration, which I hate to say was bipartisan, uh, there's been a uh, decline in our ability to protect ourselves. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, I'm going to ask Ken Abramowitz about the moral and religious decline and the loss of the Judeo-Christian culture in America. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. <laughs> Let's take a stand with Israel today. Would you sign a petition with me? Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. And sign a petition to defend Israel, who is America's closest ally, certainly in the Middle East, if not in the entire world. We remember watching Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu give that speech at the UN when he warned about the making of an Islamic nuclear bomb. And that is being forged in Iran. But what are we doing now? The USA is negotiating with the Europeans to allow Iran to continue to develop nuclear material. Well, that's not right. Do we really trust this man, Hassan Rouhani, the president of Iran, who is the former nuclear weapons chief? You don't think they're gonna build a nuclear bomb when his predecessor, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, literally threatened to wipe Israel off the map of history. Now, we need to take a stand. Why is American foreign policy to fund the Muslim Brotherhood? Let's sign a petition to stop that. Stop sending our taxpayer dollars to fund the Muslim Brotherhood. And let's also sign a petition to protect the Jewish homeland. Both of those are available today at our website, PrayInJesusName.org. And when you sign those petitions, we will fax them to Congress. Instead, the failed foreign policy of the Obama administration, starting with Hillary Clinton and now John Kerry, is pressuring Israel to give up Jerusalem? Why? We should never divide the eternal capital of Israel, which is Jerusalem, and we should move the American embassy there. But instead, now the Obama administration is unfreezing the Iranian bank accounts, sending $7 billion to them on the hope of empty promises that maybe they'll stop their nuclear program. 
Let's defend Israel. The Jewish people are our friends. They have a right to security in their homeland. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign that petition right now. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. I'm joined again via Skype from Washington, D.C. by our new friend, Ken Abramowitz, founder of SaveTheWest.com. Mr. Abramowitz, I wanna congratulate you on venturing into uh, this endeavor to save the West. I mean, this is kind of an exciting time in history, and I don't know if the solution is political or if it's religious or if it's a combination of both. Where do you begin to save the West? <laughs> Well, for, first you have to know who your enemies are, and then you have to have strategies against each of the enemies. So I, I've identified four enemies of Western civilization. I call them false narratives. And, uh, and approximately two-thirds of the people in the world believe in false narratives. And about a third of the people believe in uh, Western civilization values, Constitution, Bill of Rights, Judeo-Christian, uh, religion, history, philosophy, uh, rule of law, uh, minority rights, uh, honesty, all the wonderful values that we're so proud of. Uh, approximately one-third of the people are what I call normal. And then two-thirds of the people believe in false narratives. We have to change each of the four false narratives. Uh, the four false narratives, uh, I color-code them in my uh, speeches. Um, by the way, we're color-coded yellow for the sun, so to speak and we're what I call rational centrists in the center, but we're surrounded by false narratives. We have the false narrative of the left, the socialists, communists, the progressives, the uh, uh, part of the Democratic Party, uh, who basically believe that we don't need God anymore in the government's God, the God. And I don't believe that, I think that's a false narrative, uh, but that's the, uh, we have to contend with that uh, um, false narrative. Call so there it, is uh, this state. belief uh, and you, you talk about, politically, the Republican versus the Democrat Party, the right versus the left, but it's more than that. It is this idea that God has been replaced by uh, political power or uh, economic strength. Or What are we looking at as our idol instead of God? Yeah, it's the, uh, the government has become the modern-day golden calf, so to speak. And uh, so uh, many people look to the government for subsidies, for solutions. And my key point is, is that if we as individuals or we have fa as families have problems, we're the solution to our own problem. We have to solve our problems. If we just sit at home waiting for someone from the federal government or the state government to knock on our door and say, hello, I'm from Washington, I'm here to help you, you're in big trouble. Um, so I call that a false narrative. Uh, there's also the false narrative of, of multinational uh, organizations, in particular the UN and the EU, who ba are based on the premise that individual countries are not capable of making decisions for themselves, but the world government, the UN, or the European government, EU, will make decisions for England or for America. That's a false narrative. If America has a problem, we have to solve our own problems. Then I have the, uh, I color code that blue for the United Nations. And then white for the isolationists, who is uh, uh, white for the surrender flag, who basically believe we have oceans and prairies and mountains that will save us from terrorists. And then we have the green, the false narrative of political Islam, uh, which, which has the expression, Christians, Jews, and Hindus will convert to Islam or we're gonna kill them. You can't go around killing people who disagree with you intellectually. <laughs> so those are the four false narratives and they all have to be, we, we have to have a strategy against each of the false narratives. You mentioned Islam, and they view themselves as a religion, but I think you hit the nail on the head. They're more of a political movement, a totalitarian ideology that seeks to take over the world eventually. Uh, compare Europe to Israel, if you would, and how is Europe approaching Islam, and how is Israel approaching Islam? Yeah, Islam, in, uh, I, I heard a Muslim Brotherhood operative uh, speak. He left and converted to Christianity, he gave a speech, and I asked him after his speech, what percent of Islam is a religion, what percent is a political movement? He said, think of it as a 20% religion, 80% political movement. So I think the 20% is protected by the Constitution, 
but the 80 percent, the political movement's not protected by the Constitution. So I call uh, the enemy of Western civilizations political Islam, the politicization of a religion. Now, if we look at uh, Europe uh, versus Israel uh, 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 versus America, I'll give I'll give grades. Uh, America gets a C, Europe gets an F, uh, Israel gets a um, B minus. So um, I Israel is a um, doing better than the rest of us. Uh, uh, they they've been contending with political Islam for a long time. It's not a stranger to them. They they. They know what they're doing. They can do some better jobs here or there or there, uh, but uh, basically they know what they're doing. Europe has no clue, no clue what it's doing. Uh, uh, Turkey just declared demographic war on Germany, shipped uh, uh, close to two million Muslims, and Germany uh, just opened their gates and took them. Uh, Germany should have had a blockade of Turkey and, and sent them back to Turkey uh, or to uh, a safe zone that uh, Britain and America and others could have created in Syria. Uh, for these people. So Europe has no clue what it's doing. And as a result, it's dying in front of our eyes, but it's dying due, due to suicide. Well, I don't right here in America, uh, we have a candidate for president, Hillary Clinton, who has stated publicly that instead of just, uh, I think, 10,000 Syrian immigrants and refugees brought to America, she wants to uh, quintuple that, maybe 50,000 as soon as she is elected president. Is that a long-term good strategy? Can we assimilate Islam and turn them into democratic, you know, believers in the Constitution? Well, it is possible, but we have no idea how to do it. But I'll give you an example. I'll just guess. I've seen some surveys, but I'll sort of guess. Fifty percent of Muslims are coming here to America uh, to become Americans, just like our parents, grandparents, great-grandparents uh, might have done. Uh, they, they, they want to believe in the Constitution Bill of Rights. Forty percent, I'll guess, are coming here to impose Sharia law on us. And ten percent are coming to kill us. So we have to figure out a mechanism of separating the 50 who want to become Americans and join Western civilization from the 40 who want us to join Sharia law uh, versus the 10 who just plain want to kill us. Uh, so until we figure out how to separate the 50 from the 40 from the 10, we basically can't accept anybody till we figure that out. Well, that's a good point. We're going to take another short break. When we come back, I'll ask Ken Abramowitz about Donald Trump's strategy to begin sorting people by ideology and immigration. Giving you a megaphone in Washington, D.C. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign an important online petition. Today, I want to invite you to sign a critical petition to defend innocent babies and to end abortion in America. On this show, we like to pray and petition God, but we also need you to take action today by petitioning Congress to stop the taxpayer-funded child killing, especially by defunding Planned Parenthood, America's number one abortion provider. Why are your taxes paying to murder innocent children in the womb? Well, if Congress would simply define personhood as life beginning at conception, we can reverse Roe versus Wade. Please join me today by signing this important petition to Congress. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign your petition today. Sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. Do you ever wonder how to discern your own thoughts from the thoughts that come to you from the Holy Spirit or angels or invisible demons? I'm Dr. Chaps and you've seen us talk about the gift of discerning of spirits. In fact, I wrote my PhD dissertation, How to See the Holy Spirit, Angels and Demons. But now we have an exciting 17 part video Bible study on a four disc DVD set that you can get for your small group or your church. If you just visit PrayInJesusName.org and offer a suggested donation of $99. Or call us toll free at 866-ObeyGod. Get this 17 part video series and for a limited time only, we'll throw in the book for free. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Get this important Bible study series for you and your church. Or call us at 866-ObeyGod right now. 
He is the intersection of church and state. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Chaps. We're joined for one more segment with Ken Abramowitz, SaveTheWest.com. Ken, you mentioned the four false narratives. We talked a little bit about Islam and Hillary Clinton's open strategy toward immigration. Donald Trump has a different strategy, and that is to vet people according to their ideology. Didn't America do that with communists back in the 1950s? And, and how should uh, America's vetting process go toward immigration? Yes, uh, uh, we should vet uh, immigrants according to uh, their ideology. Uh, 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 by the way, earlier than the 50s, uh, like when my grandparents came 100 years ago, uh, I'll just guess that just about everyone who came to America wanted to be an American. And, and whatever the Bill of Rights and Constitution said, they would have agreed with it, even though they didn't even speak English. Uh, uh, but they, they were Americans in spirit, so to speak, and then they became Americans in reality. And so uh, we only want people here who want to play according to our rules, Constitution, Bill of Rights. By the way, when you go to a basketball game, they play by basketball rules, and baseball plays by baseball rules. So we, we, uh, uh, every sport has rules, and people are, are, have to abide by those rules. Similarly, countries have rules, and people have to abide by those rules. So if you don't believe in the Constitution and Bill of Rights, you shouldn't be here. Go pick another country, and we shouldn't let them in. And uh, obviously, if you want to cause physical harm to people, uh, you shouldn't be here, and we shouldn't let them in. But the difficulty is, how do you interview people and, and capture whether they are the 50% who want to become Americans versus the 40 who want us to become uh, compliant with Sharia law? versus the 10% who want to kill us. Uh, because uh, uh, Muslims are taught that it's okay to lie yeah. uh, in order to further the future of Islam. So even if you could interview uh, all of these people, you, you wouldn't know, uh, are they telling you the truth or not the truth? So it's very complicated situation. Uh, but uh, in uh, furthermore, we have to, uh, any new immigrant who does make it through the screening process has to take a, some sort of a course, whether it's online or in person, some course about Constitution, Bill of Rights, and civics so they know how the system works, and they should be tested on that. And, um, and, and, uh, uh, and, and even immigrants who are already here be, be, uh, before they get a green card or before they get their citizenship. They, they have to pass it. It's just like getting a, a, a license uh, for an automobile. You don't just walk in and say, give me a license. You, got, you have to take a test. You have to show that you know how to drive a car. So well, can I, you I think you're onto that something. you can be a citizen. I, I think you're onto something. I, I agree with your strategy. But let's go back to your premise on your website, savethewest.com. We talked about the four false narratives, but what must we do as a society to save the West? Okay, we, we, we need uh, different strategies for different enemies. So we have uh, uh, enemies that are physical enemies and we have enemies that are intellectual enemies. We have to fight physical enemies physically and we have to fight intellectual enemies intellectually. So for example, the progressive uh, element of the Democratic Party, we have to fight ideologically. They're an ideological enemy. We don't kill each other. We, we, we've grown past that. It was called the Civil War. And so we have to fight intellectually. We have to fight intellectually against the United Nations. We, America should leave the United Nations. The United Nations is an enemy of Western civilization, enemy of America. We should leave it and start uh, at uh, United Nations of democracies, not a United, United Nations of uh, dictatorships. And, and isolationists, that's a false narrative. We have to... Uh, 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 intellectually argue with people who think oceans will protect us. And then in terms of political Islam, there's four separate terror organizations. Two of them are physical in nature, two are intellectual in nature. The two that are physical, Iran, the number one terror organization in the world today, and ISIS, the number two, we have to fight them physically. And then the two that are intellectual, the Muslim Brotherhood and the so Saudi Arabia or the Saudi Wahhabis, we have to fight them intellectually so to speak. So you have to match your strategy to your enemy. Well, I think that's brilliant. Um, any other st strategic and big picture things you want to say? I, I assume you give this presentation in many different places. How can people contact you and where, I don't know if you have any books available or any resources for people. 
Right. This, yes, this is, uh, I've been doing this for three years now. This will be my third year of giving 100 free speeches as a public service uh, in the U.S., Europe, and Israel. And I have about seven or eight speeches on my website. So anybody who wants to see one of my speeches, they're between three minutes and 20 minutes. You can go to my website, savethewest.com. Uh, uh, everyone's welcome to subscribe. It's free to subscribe. Everyone's welcome to also sign up on Facebook or Twitter uh, uh, or LinkedIn uh, with me. Uh, er everyone uh, uh, can uh, send me a question and, uh, and people can uh, call me and, and, or inquire about my phone number and they're welcome to talk to me. I'm welcome if they have large groups of people and they want me to show up with uh, a lot uh, notice, three months, six months notice, I'll do my best. Uh, to show up. So I do this all as a public service because I think our government is not doing a great job protecting us and I just feel compelled to fill the void. Well, I think you have a great message. I think it's well organized and you certainly share our conservative values. I discern upon you in some way the Spirit of God is speaking through you to the Western civilization and I hope. Uh, we only have about 30 seconds here but Make a couple of predictions for us. Anything on the presidential race or long term, what happens if we don't save the West? Well, uh, 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 let me just say that we're fighting on five fronts against political Islam, and we need five strategies. I, I just went through two, physical and intellectual. Uh, but uh, political Islam has declared war on us, and actually we're in World War III. We don't know it, but we are. And, and, and they've declared war on us physically and intellectually, which I discussed but they've also declared war on us economically, legally, and demographically. So we're actually fighting political Islam on five different fronts. We need a strategy against each front. I, since I'm an uh, American and an optimist uh, and, and a believer in Western civilization, I believe the caval cavalry will come to save us, so to speak. We're gonna get a much better government in a few months and we'll confront uh, evil uh, uh, and win. That is Amen my Amen to that. Amen to that. Our guest has been Ken Abramowitz, SaveTheWest.com. We're out of time, but we'll see you next time. Chaplain Klingenschmidt is a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy who earned his Ph.D. in theology from Regent University. As a former Navy chaplain, by taking a public stand for freedom of speech and religious expression, and by sacrificing his own 16-year career and million-dollar pension, he was vindicated by the U.S. Congress, who changed the law and restored freedom for military chaplains to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps not only defended the Constitution, but his petitions have helped change the law in 10 states, restoring freedom to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.